I thought this was going to kind of be hell. Skip through it. It won't matter. Your brain hurts. It's a lot. It is a pretty simple plot that is just really dragged out. This book was Welcome back to my channel. Welcome, Cooper. My name is Ashley and I like to talk about books and today I'm gonna to be doing a reading vlog reading House of Leaves. And by today I'm gonna to be doing a reading vlog reading House of Leaves, I mean this month I'm gonna be doing a reading vlog reading House of Leaves because this is a chonky boy. I mean, this is... She thick. This book is like 700-ish pages, 650 to 700. And everybody says, well, not everybody, the Redditors say, this is like the best horror book. It really messes with your mind. It confuses you. It's so scary. I have no idea. I know it's weird. I know the page layout isn't consistent and doesn't make sense. There's parts where you have to turn it upside down. So I've always been really intrigued by this book and October is the time to do it. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it now. So I've tapped out about 164 pages each week to get through this in the four weeks of October. I'm gonna do it. We're just gonna commit. We're gonna get this chonky boy done. As far as plot and what it's about, not a clue. So we're gonna be figuring that out together. like a good time to check in. What do you think? So I was going to check in every time I hit a milestone. I had originally tapped this book out every 164 pages just based off of the entire page length and how much I would have to read each week to get this done in a month. And as I've been reading it, I've learned that's not really going to be super effective. <laughs> a large chunk of the end, like even more than this last section I had tapped out for a week, is in the index, which is what gets referred to in the footnotes. So sometimes they'll be like saying, talking about letters, and then you can like go read the letters in the index. So I've already read like probably 30 pages at least from this back part just from reading the front that refers you there. So I don't really know when I'm going to be done with this book. It's actually only like 500 something pages of just pure text before you get to the index and the appendices. So I'll just check in now. So I am at the start of chapter seven, that is 80 pages in, and I'm really proud of myself because I'm actually understanding what I'm reading and enjoying it, which I did not expect at all. I thought this was going to kind of be hell, and I did not think I was gonna be able to understand what I was reading. I thought I was really gonna have to force myself to get through this book, but I'm actually like preferring to be reading this book. I'm reading several other books right now at the time, and I like always am wanting to get back to this one. So the way this story is set up, is it, it starts with an introduction. Let me walk you through the font. And this introduction is in courier font, as you can see. It's several pages long, and the narrator of this introduction in the courier font, the font's important, is named Johnny Truant. And in this letter, he is talking about how he is sort of descending into madness as a result of what happened one night when his friend called him in the middle of the night to come over. His friend's name is Lude or Lude, I'm not sure, I've been saying Lude, it's L-U-D-E. And Lude's neighbor, who was an old man, was dead 
in his like apartment. And so he called Johnny over and Johnny is saying this letter like ever since that night, I have just been losing my mind because of what I found when I was there. So the circumstances of this man's death, a little weird and everything around it is just weird. So one thing, his cats had been like disappearing weeks before he died and then they would show up like obliterated. There were also really big deep scratches in the floor beside of his body and the police ignored it because they're like, just an old man, old man just die. Also, he was blind. And when they were there, they found a lot of writings and some of them were on napkins. They were kind of all over the place and it looked pretty nonsensical and he didn't really know what he was looking at. But Johnny ends up taking those writings with him. And he is saying as a result of that and reading all of that, he is now losing it. Also, the old man had like boarded up his windows and like blocked any kind of exterior, like did not want to have anything where he could see outside. Johnny is saying like he's also ended up doing that. And he is also warning us, the reader, that if you read this, you're also gonna get messed up. So then you flip the page and the next thing you're reading is those writings. So most of what you're reading in this book is those writings called the Navidson Record. And these writings are from the old man and it's sort of like a film critic, literary analysis type writing, but it's accessible. Don't let that intimidate you. But he's talking about this film called The Navidson Record, which was made by this photojournalist whose last name was Navidson or maybe, yeah, was his first name Navidson? It doesn't really matter. This photojournalist named Navidson who recorded his life when he and his wife and his two children moved into this new home. He put cameras up everywhere, kind of had people carrying cameras and was just recording it in interviews. He said it was just because he wanted to capture like the spirit of a family moving in and settling into a home. But you get a lot of hints that something very insidious happened in this home and the critics don't really believe that he hadn't had it planned from the start. And then you just start kind of reading more about that. And what is eerie about it is that in the introduction letter that Johnny Truant wrote for us, he said, as he was reading this, he was trying to do research and like, none of this existed. This film didn't exist. I don't think this person existed. All of these like references and citations to these other papers and other researchers and other critics that he's mentioning didn't exist, which is fine because as you're reading fiction, like none of it exists anyway, but like it's kind of eerie to know that there was this old man who kind of like went batty and wrote this whole full huge literary film critique about a film that doesn't exist from a person who doesn't exist citing quotes from people and critics and researchers who don't exist. So as you're reading the Navidson record, and I'm actually really enjoying it, it has very much like a scary movie vibe of like watching a family move into their house and things start getting weird. Um, you also will have footnotes throughout. So sometimes those are just like, I'm quoting from these people who wrote this film critique. Other times you're getting footnotes that are Johnny Truant's footnotes in here. So you you know the distinction because this would be like the Navidson record. It's written in, I don't know what font this is, like Arial, Calibri, something, Times, something really standard. And then you'll get a footnote and then it goes into courier font when it is Johnny Truant and see how long this is. So sometimes you just get pages of Johnny's footnotes and he'll go into this whole story about what he was doing when he was reading this and it is so weird because you're watching him also descend into madness and you're just your brain hurts it's a lot so yeah so far i'm really enjoying it i'm really glad i didn't know anything about it going in because then it made the fact that i'm enjoying it even more surprising and delightful <laughs> and i'm just overall having a good time one of the weird like index items that you get to see pretty early in the story is the three attic whale stow institute letters oh and another thing is you get these notes from the editors which is not like the editors of this book it's like the editors of this fake world book putting together all these notes so like that's another level of meta weirdness but these letters and it went on for a very long time were pages and pages and pages of johnny's mom writing to him and she also descended into madness. She was in a mental facility and had something going on. And so you see these letters eventually also descend into 
things like this, just utter chaos. There's one that you have to piece together like a puzzle because it's actually, she's writing in code and she wants him to read the first letter of every word. And I was sitting there like <laughs> writing down in my phone what I was reading and then it was really dark. So yeah, this book can be a lot. Uh, and there's moments when it like talks directly to you in second person and like warns you about how messed up you're gonna be and like creepy things in this world. So definitely is creepy. And I'm excited to keep reading it and see how much weirder it's gonna get. I feel like I haven't updated in a while, but I kind of haven't read this in a while. I'm about halfway through the actual book of, you know, what all there is, but that's actually closer than halfway through since the last 200 pages or so is just the appendix stuff. So I'm on page 313 and there's like 500 something. And I don't remember the last time I updated, but probably since then nothing new has really happened. they've just been further exploring the house and I've gotten to a point where I'm so sick of this main narrator Johnny dude and these long tangents he goes on that I pretty much just skim through those at this point and am just focusing on the segments actually about the house anyway this is the current situation <laughs> hello but I'm gonna get back into it and uh, catch up because I am behind schedule. Okay, hello, good morning. Things have changed. One in the storyline and two in my pressure to complete this book. <laughs> so it is currently a Tuesday morning. I would like to have this finished by Thursday evening so I can post this on Friday. And uh, I still have cool white ways to go. I am on page 347 out of 528. So it'd be like 70, like 65 to 70 pages a day. And I can get it done. And that might be reasonable. It also might not be, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. We're gonna move into speed read edition because there also are some more sections where a lot of the page is blank. So I feel like I could do it. Quick update on what's happened so far for anyone who wants full spoilers. So you don't have to read this a huge book for yourself, which at this point I would not recommend doing. Um, we'll see by the end of it if that changes, but quick spoilers. So honestly, like I don't need to tell you many details about this book because it is a pretty simple plot that is just really dragged out. So everything that's been going on has still been going on. They're still investigating the insane like hallway in their house that keeps growing and it becomes like hundreds of football fields big and there's all these hallways. It's super dark, it's super cold, it's super scary. So it's like a dark exploration type book. A bunch of them go in there to explore it and then they get stuck for a couple days like that's pretty much all that keeps happening is like they'll go to explore it and like someone gets lost or it takes longer than expected to get back because the stairway has grown because it can like change there was one cool part where they were talking well I don't know who was talking about I guess the narrator was talking about how there's this theory that the hall like changes based on your perception of it so if you go in there thinking like this is infinite size the stairway is like thousands of steps then it like it becomes that but if you go in with the expectation that it's smaller then it won't be because it like feeds into your own fears and expectations and perceptions so that was interesting but um yeah the, there we hit like the climax where they go and like it's not going well and like the wife is stuck in the house the main dude holloway was like driven to do some crazy things because he wasn't handling it well I guess honestly it's just like so dark <laughs> it like the atmosphere is just like this dark cold place where nobody really knows what's going on so you kind of also don't really know what's going on maybe what if you paid like super close attention but I am trying to get through this book so <laughs> it's not worth like spending super close attention but anyway someone gets shot and they come out and then our main guy Navidson gets like lost in there they all come out without him and then the wife is freaking out the brother is freaking out the wife is just ready to take her kids and leave the house but she can't because her husband's like lost in 
that giant hallway and like police come and they check it out for a second but then they're like oh yeah that's terrifying and so they like continue the search they do it everywhere but the house which like he's obviously in the house and then a couple nights later he just like shows up because he just kept climbing the staircase until he got out of there so yeah that's pretty much where we are right now so i'm going to try to read 65 to 70 ish pages of this bad boy now this morning before work and see if i can do that every day for the next three days so i can finish this so wish me luck <laughs> got to page 400 so that's a success but now I have to get work done so I'll get back to it later at lunch or in the evening or something. Okay, so I made great reading progress last night. I ended up getting into one of those sections again that just has hardly any words on the pages whenever they're talking about exploring inside of the house. So that was really nice because you can just flip through those really quickly and feel like you're making a lot of progress. So I'm currently on page 491 out of 528. I think I might be able to finish this this morning. For people who want spoilers, pretty much that whole section that I just read was Karen being really upset the wife and trying to heal from everything that's happened and I guess she's the one who's been working on editing the tapes which is interesting and she goes back to the house and like then nobody can find Navidson and then you get Navidson's perspective who has gone back into the halls of the house and gets really disoriented in there and is like bi bicycling around and so far he's still like trapped there so I don't know if he's gonna make it out or not but we'll see. Okay, so I finished this days ago actually, but I've been sitting on it and trying to figure out what I felt about it before I really sat down to give my final thoughts on this book. If it's worth reading, if it's not, if I liked it, if I didn't, I've just been simmering. And I would say this book was okay, but highly overrated. I also think it's one of those books that you get out of it what you put into it. So if you are someone who really wants to puzzle through a book and really figure out what it's trying to say, if anything, then maybe this would be fun for you. But if you're someone who just kind of wants to read the book and not necessarily have information handed to you, but get a story out of a book that is cohesive, maybe not worth reading this 700 page book. I think this would work way better as a movie, which partially is because most of it is the description of a movie that does not exist. So I think watching this movie I would actually like it more. I didn't dislike this book. I just thought it was too much. Like it was just trying to do too much. It was trying to make you lost and confused. And I just didn't think it needed to do that. So there's two main stories going on in House of Leaves. There is the story of the Navidson record, which is this film that's being described of this family moving into this house. All of a sudden this hallway appears and then it gets bigger and bigger and dark and mysterious and cold. And then they're exploring that and trying to figure out what's going on in their house. At the same time, they're having tension in their own family that's going on. And that's one story. So that whole story I actually really liked. I really enjoyed reading about the character Navidson, his wife, Karen, how they were having troubles in their marriage and how this whole experience shaped their marriage and their family and their children. 
And I really would have loved if that was it, if that was the story, if it was just a story about that. And there was never this whole framing of like, oh, this is made up by this crazy blind man. And this guy, Johnny Truman, found all these letters and pieced it together and made it this book and has all this commentary to add on it as he's going crazy while he's reading this. I just didn't like all of that. And I thought it was distracting. I hated reading Johnny's parts. The way he talked was vile and disgusting and gross. It's like being in the mind of the most disgusting 15 year old boy you know. Did not like that. But the whole story of the Navidson record I did like. So admittedly once I got about halfway through and realized Johnny Truant's parts don't matter as much if you don't care about getting something out of that part of the story. I was like skimming through a lot of that because there would be pages and pages of him just talking about all the women he was hooking up with and it was just not what I wanted to be reading. I just wanted to get back to the story of what was going on inside this creepy house. So that's what I mean by you get out of this what you want to get out of it. If you don't care about that, skip through it. It won't matter. You're still gonna understand what you want to understand of the story. But if you're trying to piece together this whole puzzle, then maybe you need to read every single word. I did not read every single word, which is not something I usually do, but this just, I realized pretty quickly you don't have to do that. I also think while some of it was cool by being experimental in structural form, a lot of it was also just unnecessary. There was a whole section in here and I don't think I'm gonna be able to find it, but there was a whole part where things were formatted really strange and you would read it one way. Oh, I found it, okay. Things were formatted really strange and it sent you on this sort of scavenger hunt trying to find what you were even reading. So you would have to flip like 20 pages reading one section of the page and then you have to go back 20 pages ago to read the next section of the page and then you'd have to flip it upside down to read that again. And some of it was just these lists of things that don't even matter. Like on page 120, there's a footnote where they're just talking about for example, there is nothing about that house that even remotely resembles 20th century works, whether in the style of postmodern, late modern, brutalism, neo-expressionism, Wrightian, the new formulism, and is literally just a list of styles for pages. And you don't have to read every word of that. So I just think it's really important if you're going to read this book, know that you don't have to read every word of these crazy nonsensical pieces. You can kind of just move on and you're still gonna know what's going on. But ultimately, I just don't know what to think about this because while I still enjoyed the story of the Navidson record, I would still even say that alone was probably like a three star story anyway, just because of how long it drags out some parts and some of these explorations and how the things are wrapped up in the end. I just didn't think it did the best job of that. So yeah, if you're watching this wondering, do I really need to read House of Leaves? Is it really the best horror book ever? Is it really gonna mess with my mind and make me scared? No, it won't. <laughs> There's a couple passages in the first maybe 100 pages that get a little weird and you can tell are trying to get into your head. But for the rest of the book, I was like, this is just a book. This is just a story, nothing crazy going on here. So unless you're super committed to reading this just for the sake of reading it, then would probably say you're fine to not read it. If you want the spoilers of how this ends so you don't have to read it for yourself, I'll pick back up from where I was talking about last time to let you know how this book plays out in the end. So last we heard, Davidson had gone back in the house and was on his own exploration for a very long time, bicycling, just getting lost. Karen ends up coming to the house to try to find him. Can't, um, ends up going into the hallway to try to save him, which is a big deal for her because she never would before go in there. And then she finds him pretty quickly and he's really, really cold, like hypothermic. And so she just holds him. And then a little bit later, they're found sitting on their lawn. And when Karen's asked about it, she says she doesn't know what happens. It just felt like the house dissolved around them because she was in there holding him one second. And then the next, they were just out on the lawn. So he was able to be saved. He lost some limbs and fingers and such. And that's kind of it. Then the book ends. They've moved on, they're a family again. They're clearly not the same. I think Karen ends up getting breast cancer for some time, but yeah, it kind of ends on this melancholy note and a shot in the film where Navidson is showing a road, like the bend of a road where you won't be able to see the road anymore, which is like symptomatic of the everything that has happened so far. 
if I missed anything, I may have missed the part where his brother comes into the house too to try to help and save him and then he ends up dying. So that was sad when his brother dies as well. But yeah, like I said, I don't know. It was just okay. The story wasn't great. It's not like my new favorite. I would not recommend this really to anybody. I just don't think it's worth your time and energy and effort and confusion. I feel glad that I read it because now I know what I was not missing out on. If you've read House of Leaves, let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think of it. Do you also think it's overrated or is there something that you really like about this book that I just didn't get out of it? And if you haven't read this book, but you were interested in it, let me know if I've changed your mind and now that you no longer wanna read this. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.